Good day chaps. So today's video follows on from our previous video on the Vickers Mark 1 and the Mark 2. And we're looking at the Vickers Mark 3 main battle tank. The last of the Vickers tanks to see any commercial success and a tank that, much like the Mark 1, helped save Vickers from going bust at the time. So to quickly recap, Vickers had produced the Mark 1 as a requirement for India, which historically was one of their biggest trading partners. This vehicle went on to become one of the UK's biggest trade deals in terms of armour, with over 2,000 vehicles made under licence in India and saw service in several wars. However, despite it being a very good basic platform, it didn't sell well outside of that particular deal, with a few more sold to Kuwait. Nevertheless, it gave Vickers the funds required to remain operational at a time when its future was looking bleak. However, the greatest threat to this tank wasn't from abroad, it was from within, for the vehicle had its own detractors and critics at home, who favoured the Centurion tank, and dogmatically took to putting the Vickers tank down as an inferior knockoff Centurion, which persisted and was repeated time and time again. This in turn began to affect the designers at Vickers, who set about making improvements to the Vickers line. This was for a short time designated the Vickers MBT Mark II. A hybrid of sorts, the Mark II would never become a full vehicle. Instead, it remained a series of plans and models only, and was a transitional vehicle between the Mark I and the Mark III. The Mark II initially was to have a new hull front, improved American power pack, a new turret, and still retain the idea of swing fire missiles as a force multiplier. From the early drawings and plans of the Mark II, the first Vickers Mark III tanks came into being. Early Mark III drawings still retained the bulbous driver's cupola, now smoothed down, and at least one drawing had the ubiquitous swing fire missile still added. The first true Mark III's were very similar to the Mark I. The hull remained similar in the early days, with a distinctive slope plate of the Mark I, but now the driver had one periscope rather than three and the vehicle was powered by an American Detroit diesel engine. It was initially planned to give the Mark III the Leyland L60 engine, but this appears to have been dropped before production. The most defining feature was the new turret. This replaced the older external mantle of the Mark I and adopted the design of the internal mantle from the Mark II drawings, with a tapered front and clean, well-swept lines. She retained the L7A1 105mm gun, although now with a thermal sleeve as standard, and a host of new fire control systems and electronics to bring the vehicle up to date, along with a passive day and night Pilkington Condor optics, a laser rangefinder, and so on. The Mark III also played a much more important role for Vickers, as much like the Mark I vehicle, its trade success would once again save Vickers from, from financial difficulty. In the late 70s, Vickers had once again found itself in a situation where it was back in the red with the banks. It had produced a series of failed systems, such as the troubled vigilant missiles, yet found itself in need of massive improvements to its core land factories, which had been relatively unchanged from the 1930s. They had just moved their Defence Systems Division a mile up the road to a new site at Scottswood Road from the older, outdated buildings at Ellswick, known as Project Dreadnought. But such a move had cost them dearly, losing 400 staff as well as no amount of trouble from the unions. This, compounded with their budget, left Vickers looking a little unstable. However, before the Mark III had even begun, Vickers had acquired a 100 million trade deal to produce 76 new tanks for Kenya, along with seven Mark III armoured recovery vehicles, which gave it a much-needed credit boost. These were the first of the Mark III's, and the only ones to be called the Vickers Mark III. The rest of them would have a suffix added after the name to separate them. This deal was quickly followed by a large £115 million deal with Nigeria, after a five-year negotiation, to produce 72 tanks, which would be classified as the Vickers Mark III N, as well as 12 bridge layers and 10 recovery vehicles, along with a load of Scorpion light tanks and even some old Saxons. Followed later in 1990 by a further £282 million deal for 64 more tanks, for a total of 136 Vickers Mark III N tanks. In 
This gave vicars the breathing space it required and allowed them to re-employ many that had been laid off, as well as take on 700 new staff. These Vickers 3s and 3Ns, which are virtually the same vehicle, the later Nigerian vehicles having a solid thermal shroud in place of the canvas one, with other tweaks to the electronics, the Mark 3N was called the Eagle. Both vehicles came with a 105mm gun, firing APDS and HESH, with the Pilkington day and night passive systems and the American engine. Both these vehicles had a laser rangefinder, but also retained a .50 Browning machine gun rangefinder mounted coaxially. The crew consisted of four, with the driver to the front left, and the commander, gunner and loader located in the fighting compartment. The turret armour itself is thinner than that of even the Mark I, at only 25 to 40 mm thick, although angled back to offer the same 80 mm effective thickness of the older model. The gun's depression was also increased to minus 10 over the front. The torsion bar suspension remained more or less the same as the original vehicle, with six pairs of road wheels in a 3-3 layout. The hull armour remained 80mm over the front, and while this was not enough protection to stop modern rounds at the time, this was not part of the design criteria. Vickers was well aware that to be able to reach the levels of immunity to the primary threats these tanks would face, notably T-55 and T-62, it would be impossible to design such a machine that would remain under 40 tonnes or without using the Chobham type armours, which were not allowed for export to these nations. Thus they chose to place speed and firepower over protection, relying on agility and a first round hit capability to destroy enemy armour before the vehicle itself could be hit, yet offering enough protection from auto cannon fire and shell splinters. The Mark III's in Africa would carry on serving for 40 years and are still operational today, which is pretty impressive for British tanks, considering the original producer went bust 20 years ago. However, follow-up sales were not as successful. Both Dubai and Thailand showed interest in the Vickers Mark III, but things went a bit sour. In the case of Dubai, the Vickers sales team sent out the wrong vehicle, an outdated Mark I, which broke down for a week, and no sales were acquired. This would have been the Vickers 3D. A second vehicle was sent out to Thailand in January to February 1984, after a Thai visit to the Royal Armoured Corps in 1983. They wanted a tank to face possible rivals from the Vietnamese and Cambodian vehicles on their eastern border, and felt that their chunkier M48s would be too easily bogged down. Thus they trialled the Mark III, along with the OF-40, the SK-105 and the TAM tank. This would have been the Vickers 3T, however the VDS team cocked things up and no sales were placed. They ended up choosing the American Stingray later on. Next up was the Vickers 3i, or Improved, in 1986-1987. This featured improvements over the original vehicles, notably in the engine pack, which replaced the older American engine with a water-cooled Rolls-Royce Condor regulated at 800-900 to brake horsepower. This was coupled with a TN1200 gearbox, which took the vehicle up to 60 km per hour. Modifications were also made to the front hull armour, with a new cast front instead of the distinctive welded step front of the older model, and a muzzle reference system was added to the tanks, as well as the ability to fire a full range of armour-piercing, fin-stabilising, discarding sabre rounds. Improvements were also made to the tracks, which were wider, and the running gear and wheels were strengthened, with the torsion bars improved and a new sprocket added. Another noticeable feature of the Mark III is it went back to three periscopes for the driver, instead of the one large device, with the central one being a night vision device. Two vehicles were made and it underwent trials in the desert in 1987. Despite these improvements, no sales were generated for the Mark III. The last of the Vickers Mark III's is the 3M, which was developed for Malaysia who showed interest in acquiring the vehicles, and at least one was sent for testing. Interestingly, the M affix appears to stand for both Malaysia and modernised, with Vickers sources stating both in their documents. The Mark III M had a new fire control system, as well as a laser rangefinder, thermal optics for the commander and driver, who also went back to a single large periscope. The gun had a new thermal shroud, and the vehicle came with a Vickers Varma or Royal Ordnance Roma ERA protection over the entire frontal arc and sides, 
offering excellent protection versus RPGs. The engine was still the Rolls-Royce engine of the 3i model, and the vehicle could also be fitted with a dozer blade to the front. One vehicle was sent out for testing, where it performed very well, but at a much higher cost than they were prepared to pay for it, and so no sales were generated. This was the last of the Mark III's to be built, and only a pair were made. The Mark III's were the last of the commercial sales success for Vickers, and despite their somewhat primitive design, proved to be good reliable tanks, still working today. After the Mark III, Vickers never really saw any other great sales export success. The Mark IV was cursed, the Mark V gained no interest, and the Mark VII, arguably one of the finest tanks ever built, never saw service. Vickers never got a chance to go further, being swallowed up by BAE in the late 90s and closed down. Like the Mark I, the Mark III represents the end of an era in British tank design, and despite offers to a British tank museum, they stated they're not interested in having one in their collection. So it is likely that the rest of them will see out their service life in Africa, and then be scrapped. Well guys, I hope you liked that. Sorry for the delays in the videos, I've not been well recently, but I'll try and get back on track. Later on we'll cover the Mark 4, 5 and 7. If you did like this, do give it a share and see if this channel can grow. And until next time, toodle pip.